Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Today we've got Mr. Kevin McCurley from Nerd on. Those of you that have maybe wondered how Kevin is such a savant with the animals, well you're going to find out in this video exactly how he got to be that way. I've been looking forward to putting this video up. It's been tough to make it go in the order of the, all the videos that I've recorded. I kind of wanted to push it to the front because I'm, I really enjoyed this interview. But it, here it is, finally. You're watching Triple B TV. It's great to sit here next to you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. For you. Yeah, well, uh, when I first moved back from Hawaii and was getting back into the hobby and keeping, your, your books was one of the first things I came across. And, then, and your videos as well, actually. Oh, my bubble videos. <laughs> my iPhone 3. Look, there's a cute monitor. <laughs> oh, look, three people looked at it. It's awesome. And, and I got three thumbs down. <laughs> no. That's, that's mild. Three thumbs down, no. Uh, no, no, I'm now, I think I'm, I have a, I have a good solid 10 or whatever. It's, it is funny though, I could literally have like a cute little kitten in a white room and it goes and then <laughs> I'd be like, within the first like day, I'd be like getting some thumbs down. It's like a kitten or whatever, but it, like baby dwarf came in, thumbs down. Well, I've come to learn that a thumbs down is a good thing. I, it's, it doesn't, I just do the little switch where I want to like retaliate when people like say crummy things to me and I'm like Rrr! and then I'm like okay Kevin just be passive and I just passive and I'm like I can't even engage him because I'm fighting with somebody I'm never gonna be able to change their opinion yeah that's a that's a, probably a safer a smarter way to do go about you're it. just a greedy breeder and you're making all the money and and I'm like where is it rolling any Rolls Royce and private jet <laughs> <laughs> it's so not it is so not that that's well, for sure. Well, now, now that I'm sitting with you, like, you're definitely, you're definitely like ex exuberant and like, you're all I'm over the I'm place. Trying, I'm trying to sit still right now. Yeah, no, you're saying, I'm, that's, I figured that would happen. That's why I got you attached to the table with that cable right I'm there. like, I just have to calm, uh, Kevin, you have to sometimes be like normal and professional <laughs> to well, a that, degree. Well, speaking of that, like, some of the things I watch you like, um, sorry, I've not slept yet. Um, uh huh. <laughs> when, when I see like, uh, uh, what is the word when you like get debriefed before a legal body or a legislative body when you're <laughs> educated <laughs> educated what you're talking about it's yeah. like i barely even know who you are so somebody needs to give me some crib notes well supposedly he's gay <laughs> he's a crystal meth user and addict and dealer <laughs> I'm like, those are all supposed things <laughs> <laughs> i'm like really i am Oh, I thought you were talking about me. No, me. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but but how do you, I've watched some of your testimonies before yeah. legislative bodies. I'm and a monster. <laughs> you are very, very on it. Like you're on it. You're very you're well spoken and you are very passionate, but at the same time not attacking. You're getting your point across in a way that it's I'm, I'm, I try to manipulate people's minds that, that hate us. No, it's uh So I think like the first couple times I did it. I kind of was like, okay, what am I going to talk about? And I kind of tried to like prepare myself and I became like befuddled with like, there's so much stuff I want to say. And then I'm listening to everybody else. They're sitting down. They got this, hello, uh, chairman. Thank you for being here. Whatever. They do this whole thing. And it becomes, um, the dynamics are, I think are gone. It's just because they're trying to be very careful and calculated about what they're saying because it sure. is easily, it's heartfelt and it's very important. But I have a lot of stuff to spit out. But as I sit there and I listen to other people talking, and then I hear, you know, uh, the Senate or the House speakers, or whatever, and there are things that they're talking about, or the um, representative that is proposing the bill, and I hear what they're saying. So as soon as they start saying their gibberish, I like make a mental note of everything that I'm that they're saying that I want to challenge. So I can't just sit here and write all this stuff down because I'm going to get lost. So I just kind of like memorize it, and I sit down. And I'm trying to think, like, how can I articulate this to somebody that naturally doesn't understand anything of what we do? And how can I get them to even have any sympathy or any empathy or understanding of what we're doing? So I try to make myself look reasonable, but I have to make myself look very confident that literally the gibberish that's coming out of my mouth is very factual, that I, can, I will argue anything. You put me against anybody, and if I know something, I'm going to argue. And when I argue, I want to win. So when I'm sitting down there with them, 
same kind of thing. I have to be kind of confident, but I can't talk down to them or, you know, not that I have any right to, but I, I want to like, I want to make a connection with them. So I noticed the last thing I went in front of like uh, the house committee that was in New Hampshire and they, they were like doing this. They're all like, you know, listening to all these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cats, dogs, you know, you got a hamster or whatever. And they were, I was watching their body language and I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible. <laughs> I'm going to go up there and they're going to be like, this guy, he's, you know, he's like super hyper. And I sat down there and I just went right to it because all the things I want to talk about. And I watched their behavior. They're like doing this. They're sitting up. And then they started like moving forward. And as soon as I see that, I'm like, I know that's, that's the line to, to run. And I just kept that one on point. So what you even saw, like the last thing, you only saw part of it. Because... Right our video uh, died. Oh. <laughs> so I went I went on for like another 20 minutes. I went to the point where when I left, I did the Senate and I did the House Committee. When I left the House Committee, one of the members of the House came out and the woman tracked me down. She's like, you're not leaving, are you? And I'm like, no. And she goes, wow. She's like, you know, you're amazing. Like what you know and what you were saying. She goes, that was so good. She's like, I was like captivated. And she was like shaking my hand. And that's really nice because she doesn't know anything about animals. And it just means that I'm a little bit effective. But I've also been, you know, I've cut my teeth with like US ARC because when we're fighting against, you know, the injurious uh, pythons and, and anacondas, they give me 330 pages of what US Fish and Wildlife and the biologists of US Fish and Wildlife, what it basically is their fact sheet, which is 330 pages. Why? Reticulated pythons, African rock pythons, Burmese pythons, anacondas, all are injurious and should not be allowed to be here. And I'm like, I can write 300 pages to retaliate against this. And they're like, well, we need to do it in 24 pages. And then you have to go and integrate with the attorneys and they don't know anything, so you have to educate them. So I cut myself a little bit because I tend to be all over the place because I really have a lot of information to get out there. So I have to kind of like dial it in a little bit you're like i wish you would dial it in no right you're dialing, no, you are dialing it in right now this because like before i asked that you were kind of all over the place but now you're now you're like a laser oh, yeah, yeah i just i zero right in and then i just go until people are all yawning but you know or bored but i, I just uh not that i have any any um capacity for this i tend to be actually very shy and i don't like to talk in front of people but i learned how to get over it and, you know, but be a musician playing in front of people. I remember, like, used to do that. I'm like, get up on stage. And I'm like, this isn't even me. I feel like this is like a dream. And then it's like, I'm supposed to sing and play leads and play all this kind of complicated music. You shred, man. You Thank shred. You. Anybody who hasn't watched this guy shred, you shred that guitar. Thanks. Um, yeah, but it all helped me come out of my shell. So, because I was, you know, kind of a little bit introverted playing with bugs. That, like, I, people hear me and I say, oh, I learned this all because I play with bugs, but literally my skill set for what I do with like the nuances of understanding animals is because as a kid, my brothers and the neighbor up the street would like to catch me and torture me. And they were like, you know, they were like, they had this hand generator, my brother had this hand generator and he would handcuff me to a green chair and then put the clips on and they go, Whizz! and I go, great, because they were electrocuting me and then the friends would come over, let's go catch Kevin. And so they would do that kind of stuff. So I would start hiding in the woods and I was playing with bugs. So I was like, you know, bugs and salamanders and bees and ants and stuff like that. It's a safe place to be away from. But I was literally, <laughs> no, it was, I mean, looking back at it, it's like, yeah, whatever. It made me tough. But it just, um, I started just like appreciate like, like these little things. So that's all I had, you know, you had like bugs. So I was like playing with them and I, I was fascinated by them. I'm still fascinated by bugs. And then I just got into fish and then I was catching garter snakes and then I just it, the whole thing progressed do you ever find that the handling of bugs and seeing their behavior does that help with the monitor stuff because you're, you're everything. monitor everything it all everything. ties together everything so I, I sit there and I was really um, fascinated by praying mantis and so I would keep praying mantis longer than they normally would die and uh, I had a praying mantis for like over a year and uh that's a really smart little bug. I'm fascinated by like bees, even, you know, horn. I'm allergic to like, you know, yellow jack and stuff, but I'm still fascinated by them. But uh, like jumping spiders and stuff like that, these things are genius. Like a jumping spider, how can this little thing, you like walk over the thing, the thing's like looking up at you. Oh, look, it's a giant monster. Here, have a bug and the thing like, okay. And eats. 
I don't know how they, they can do that because if you look at the scientists say that the neuron cluster of the honeybee has is so small that it does not have the capacity to learn, that everything's born inherent, you know? And the fact is they showed that a honeybee can learn. They can they can re-engineer, you know, where they, you know, honeybees are, they don't go across water generally to find food. And they took, you know, they, they showed that they could, you know, recondition that honeybee now to go across the water to get the food and then goes back to the hive, tell the other ones and they're all going across. I mean, so they're, they're learning all these things. And uh, with the monitors, which are just literally genius. When we look, you know, naturally, if you're into reptiles, you go, oh, look at a monitor, it's really reactive, it's, you know, looks smart, but that's only the beginning of it. And then you start realizing how quickly they can, they assess things, they can look, look around, they take them out and they look around and within literally seconds, they've assessed a lot of things. They, they're looking around for danger. Oh, I see the head of a big monitor, I'm a small monitor, all of a sudden they're like, I'm on point. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's a stranger and all this different stuff. And it's like, how are you able to do it? You're a reptile, you're cold-blooded, it's supposed to be slow thinking. So I, I was uh, rather enamored with that. And then I take the same thing to snakes, obviously other lizards, you know, tokay geckos, uh, dwarf caiman, all that kind of stuff like that. So I just kind of see what you might not normally see. It's just because I'm just like staring at it and I'm just kind of watching it. And I always have the saying, like see them for what they are, not what you think they are because if you, you know, if you judge somebody, you know, just like, like a stereotype. So I have long hair. Oh, he, he does, you know, he's a drug addict or whatever, or, or, or whatever it is. And if you just, you know, you go, okay, you know, he is that, and then that's it. They shut and shut you down. They don't realize what you are. But generally, when I meet people, you know, you can just look at anybody, and you know, you suddenly, you know, you're like, wow, I was wrong, or about this, or wrong about that. Same thing with these animals. I just see something in them but look at them for what they are so take the time and let the animal do what it does and i know this is long-winded but when you do reptiles i always have the same look at them in modes so they have modes so they're sleep mode their fear mode they're uh wanting to eat mode like let's say like a reticulated python hands you know it's like uh, and then thinking mode if you are playing with these animals, and we all aspire to play with these animals when they are in thinking mode. When they're thinking mode, there's no fear. They're just moving around and they're doing everything. Like I could take out a really nice bearded dragon that just sits there and is looking up at you and doing that. There's really no fear. That animal has no fear. And so you look at that animal and it's very placid because it's very trusting of you. If I throw fear in there, all of a sudden it's going to change its behavior. It's going to become erratic. It's going to actually act very differently than the true animal. So I try to get these animals into the thinking mode. And a lot of times people, when they're interacting with their animals, they're never considering any mode. They're just, just doing this. Oh, this one's this one's skittish. Oh, this one's this. And this is like, okay. But did you actually get it out? So a lot of times people can give me snakes that are kind of crazy or whatever. And I'm like, very quickly, I can get it right out of that mode. And they're like, Oh, that's really weird or whatever. I can catch wild animals too. And you you do that, you just basically, you teach these animals very quickly because they are capable of learning. And actually sometimes learning pretty quick. You just teach them that don't fear me and then like think. So like a rattlesnake, I do timber rattlesnake stuff. And uh, so when you go up to a rattlesnake and it's sitting underneath a rock or sitting on the edge of a rock, if you go up to it, if I come up really fast, I'm gonna put it into fear mode. So now that animal's just in fear, so it's, it's gonna to wanna to go and hide. So if you go up there and it's resting, and I go over there, let's say he's a snake hook. If you go over there and you touch the snake with the snake hook and all the snake is like, okay, let's say it was sleeping, all of a sudden it's awake. Okay, what's going on? Oh, what's this thing? It goes over, flicks its tongue, takes a couple little smells, and then the animal's disposition changes. So if I go there and then I can pull the animal out, and if I don't, go over, if I don't overstep and put it into fear mode, and I, I maintain that thinking mode, snake's totally different. I, I used to go and pick up, you know, timber rattlesnakes, just, just free handling them, and I could have no rattling, the whole kind of thing I do, with even with the researchers, they're like, okay, go do your thing, and then pull them out, and they're like, how the hell are you doing that? But it, it's, uh, if you handle these animals mechanically, without, you know, they're not coffee mugs, so if you go in there and you just, there's a snake, hook it, drag it out, da, 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 da. you're never actually allowing the animal to catch up to actually what's happening. So 
I just do that with my captive animals. Slow, aware movements. That movement yeah. Based on what they're doing and what in, you're reading off of them. In reading behavior, snakes a lot. Of, like there's there's different levels of intelligence I view with snakes, and I'm sure I'm. I'm wrong in many ways but i have like you know let's say like a, a king cobra is a genius uh, a reticulated python is really smart um, i think a lot of blood pythons and short tail pythons are smarter than we we know and that's why they tend to do these little spastic things because if something bad happens those little guys remember it <laughs> they don't forgive it's really kind of crazy and they explode but that's a great snake where you watch somebody who's good at handling them and has finesse can manage them no problems. And you get somebody else that's like, take hook, pick snake up, move, snake explodes. <laughs> it's like, because there's no finesse at all. So I think it's, you know, we, we have different mindsets with these snakes and different levels of intelligence, but they do show you a lot. And the monitors show a ton of what they're thinking just by their body language. And I watch tongue flicks on snakes a lot. I watch, you know, just movement, but certainly tongue flicks and behaviors on monitors. And then I take that and I can pretty much put that towards so many different animals. And I, I just was, you know, I taught myself this because need to know how to, how to interact with this crazy retic that came out of the wild and that thinks I'm going to skin it. And I'm like, I can't go and grab it behind its head. If I grab it behind its head, I'm never going to have any rapport with that animal. So my caught in the wild. Maybe. Right. Now, well, they're, they're getting skinned. Yeah. They're caught in the wild. They're they're tethered to sticks. <laughs> they're like literally like the worst behavior possible. And these are animals are highly intelligent in my regard. They have a memory. They don't just. They're not like yesterday. I forget. You know. They they like remember. So you have an animal that like learns how to get out. You take it and put it back in that cage, and the animal's right back there. It might have taken me four months to figure out the magic way to get out of the cage. Now they're right there, and they're just going to do it. And then you could put it in a different cage, and then bring it back. You know, a month later goes right back to it it knows and it's like how can you be so smart but they are for them to live and for them to succeed so very cryptic animals that hide all the time maybe not the smartest very animals that are active hunters that are out there and moving around they have to be sharper they have to be more intuitive they have to be able to manage the, a lot more dangerous they can't rely just on you know uh hiding under a rock and coming out and you know or whatever so i i just see these little things and it's I don't see a lot of other people that talk like this. But now that I'm talking like this and I do my little YouTube stuff, I'm like, I came to this show and I've been under a rock for a while. So I come to the show and everybody's like just coming up to me saying all oh, these wonderful things. And I'm like, wow. Because, you know, I read my comments sometimes in the beginning and I try to comment back because I get so many nice people that say so many nice things. And then you see these people like, I'm taking what you're showing and da da da, you're my favorite and I love all this different stuff. And it's cool because now you can go, oh, wow. Because you don't realize, I didn't realize a lot of this stuff until like Rafi was filming me. You know, mm -hmm. uh, M.A. Balls, uh, Rafi Martinez. Yeah. And uh, he was like, look at all these ball pythons. And, you know, I wasn't even like, I was just like my own little world. I'm like, I just want to make these ball pythons for myself. Yeah, we'll sell some, stay in business. But he's like, you need to show what you do. And then he's like looking at the monitor stuff. And uh, when I started showing my monitor stuff, and I started going out and doing videos. The other monitor keepers hated me. They were losing, they're like, this is trickery. He's making them cold. He's he's using this feed conditioning, you know, all this different stuff. And it was like, I got annihilated. I got blazed like bad to the point where I go on that, like, let's say there was a, a big main water monitor group and I went on there and I was being mercilessly attacked. It's like, and I, can, I can fight back, but I was just like, Jesus Christ. So I ended up starting my own monitor group because I'm like, yeah fine, you guys suck. And then I went and made this, this monitor group. So I have like, you know, Urban Dinosaurs, like 20,000 members in that. And that I can just curtail or do it to the way I want. No live feed videos, you know, because I try to be responsible about, you know, how we are. Other animals. I, I have a great empathy for other animals, including rodents. And I do not like people that, that like to torture animals at all. It really, it bothers me. It makes me... <laughs> it makes me really, it makes me pretty bad because then they'll have to deal with like, if I have to engage these people face to face and like you're like cruel to animals, I don't think I can keep my mouth shut. I keep my mouth shut now so you can ask me a question. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, 
you did a great job of answering a lot of the questions I had without having to be prompted, which is fantastic. They like me on podcasts. I love for when that. people do that. Yeah. Podcast it, just like ask, say two things, Kevin. Oh, an hour and a half just went by. <laughs> I'll it's ask fantastic. myself my own questions. No, that, that was that was perfect. I, I have. I mean, I'd like to talk with you further in the future. I'd like to stay in contact 100%. Like going forward here, but as far as this video is concerned, you you just gave us some gold. So. Thanks again, Kevin, for taking a moment to sit down with us. I hope all you folks at home enjoyed that and got a little insight into exactly what makes Kevin tick there. I'm looking forward to coming out and spending some time with you guys once all this stuff blows over and getting some jamming on. There's going to be a link down in the description for those of you that don't already know about the Nerd Channel, and there's also going to be a specific link down there so you can see my favorite video from his band, Crotalus. Next week, we're going to be talking with Mr. Kevin Bluefort about the origin of the Kiki Ball. And until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care. Give me my guitar. You guys did, yeah, you guys didn't give me the fiddle. We need that for the intro. So yes, the music in my videos tends to be my music. Same, same with Kurt's, me. Kurt's the, the intro music, and the outro music in my videos, I, I record as well. I'm a musician as well. I played professionally for 12 years. So yeah, you're you're talking about like you tour or whatever. You toured for a long time. Yeah. That's a that's a tough racket. Yeah, it is not conducive to family life. I want to come out and see you guys sometime on the East Coast. And if, if we could jam at some point during that little trip, that would be fantastic. So you play guitar? I play I play guitar, I play yeah. drums. I started playing piano when I was seven, and then just music. Very professional musician. I know, I it's know, like I've ridiculous. heard him play. I've heard him sing, I've heard him uh, scat. <laughs> you gotta hear me scat too. That was easy. Yeah. That was painless. I don't know how to do it. I don't like to I don't like to bring people over then. <laughs> Last thing I want to do is cause somebody pain. So like I didn't get to get ask him any me. questions or anything. He just yeah. I didn't get to play the most. He's gonna be like all of a sudden like we're we're interviewing all of a sudden. So Kevin, why did you start ball python cruelty with the spider ball gene? Dun 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 and I'm gonna get <laughs> That actually was my first question. Do I got red lights on there? I'm not cool enough to have somebody else paying attention to that. Make sure that these things are actually recording before I uh, do what this I do. This looks like he's got quite the rig. Double pimped out Canon cameras. It looks like I've got a rig. It's just a, it's all a facade. There's like Sarah McLaughlin music, McLaughlin or whatever. <laughs> Some horrible, sad HSUS commercial about puppies and kittens that make me cry. Those commercials all, I can't watch I don't those. know how people are so accurate with their observations of what I'm really doing over here. That's pretty, that's pretty spot on. <laughs>